It's Tuesday, June 21st. From inside the WTOP newsroom, this is the DMV Download, brought to you by the men and women of Steamfitters Local 602. Get an estimate and learn more at steamfitters-602.org. Today is a big one for parents who've waited for this for more than a year. Kids who are six months to five years old can now get vaccinated for COVID-19. WTOP's John Doman brings us the stories from some parents who were first in line. Oh my goodness, we are thrilled to have the opportunity. We've been waiting, and so we're really excited to have the opportunity to protect them. We also talked to a vaccine expert about the differences between the Pfizer and Moderna child vaccine. Now, little children are not really at risk for severe disease, but the reason to get vaccinated now is they're more at risk for severe disease later. And happy summer. With this beautiful weather, many of us may be breaking out our running shoes. WTOP's Christy King comes on to tell us about a new clinic that's helping runners improve no matter their skill level. You come in for an initial evaluation that's very extensive, and they come up with a program for you, tailored to you. Thanks for joining us. I'm Megan Cloherty. And I'm Luke Garrett. Young kids and their parents lined up early at Children's National Hospital Clinic in Northwest D.C. this morning eager for the COVID vaccine for their little ones. It's been a year and a half since adults could get their shot, and now it's the kids' turn. WTOP's John Doman was there when the clinic doors opened. He joins us now to tell us what he heard from parents. Um, And John, you've covered like every iteration of the vaccine rollout. So was this one different? Did it feel different than others? Uh, I think the one thing that every one of these rollouts has had has been relief to some extent. There's always parents Mm. or people, you know, teachers was the first one. I think there's always that relief. You know, one woman, Andrea Spriggs, who I spoke with, her daughter, 18 months old, born very premature, mm. has chronic lung condition and uh, has breathing difficulties. Mm. So it's been very isolating, <laughs> uh, to say the least. And um, we're just excited for today to get her out and being able to be around family and friends and kids her age. Like the relief in her was so much more noticeable and understandable because, right. you know, we're talking about a respiratory illness. And when your daughter has very bad respiratory problems to the point that she can't talk yet at 18 months old, has been, you know, probably in and out of hospitals more than she's been in and out of relatives' homes, there is that relief. So it's going to vary from from parent to parent. Mm-hmm. But just in general, in knowing a lot of parents who have kids that are under the age of five, it's been a very aggravating few months, very anxious and just frustrating time. And now we finally hit that last step. And over the next few weeks, I think a lot of those anxieties are going to start to dissipate. Mm. And returning to Andrea and her daughter really quickly, what does this vaccine mean to them? I mean, what did she tell you? Well, it's it means they feel a little bit more comfortable trying to find some normalcy again. Mm. She talked about, I guess, just being eager to be able to do things like go to Target, go to Trader Joe's, you know, go to grocery stores And bring your child with you. Like you're not, you know, she doesn't work right now. She's home caring for his child. Her husband's at work. And she wasn't at a point where going to a grocery store where a lot of people are unmasked anymore was going to be safe for her daughter. She didn't want to take that chance. And look, I understand that. I mean, Mm -hmm. you want to protect your child. And if you know how ill your child has been all these years, you're not going to be uh, very risky in a lot of your behavior. Now, once she gets these series of shots she might feel a little bit more comfortable going to the store and just seeing people again. And taking her to a park um, so she can play and, um, yeah, just show her some some normalcy. I mean, that's a lot of these little kids have never seen people beyond just the ones in their house Mm. or, you know, just maybe a couple more than that. Yeah, you don't think about how they've been. I mean, how we felt between like March and what, September of 2020 is how they've felt this entire time. I mean, it's just like, I mean, maybe even past September because we didn't get the vaccine until the next year. But like it has never let up is my point. Right. They've always had to be on guard this parents, entire time kids. for their parents. Yeah. yeah. From from the day their child was born, in some cases, they've not been able to do anything. And that's not going to apply to everybody. Some parents have uh, older kids who do have the shot. And now this is just this this last one that yeah. they can finally get it and they mm-hmm. can really go all out again. But I, I think it. At this point, a lot of parents, even if they have kids that some had the vaccine and some have not been eligible yet, they've sort of been easing back into more normalcy that what we saw, you know, saw and did pre-pandemic mm-hmm. compared to a lot of these other parents. So it's sort of sort of a case by case thing. But just in general, you know, the pediatrician I spoke with said this is one of the very top milestone moments of the pandemic because 
Like, this is the last domino to fall for people. And I think that it's going to make our lives feel a lot more normal. And that was Dr. Sarah Schaefer Daru, the pediatrician you were talking about. And she actually had her kid there as well. Yeah, so she's got two children. Both of them are under the age of five. Her oldest one, she was able to get into the, one of the Pfizer clinical trials. So he's already gotten some protection being part of this experiment, I guess, if you would. Yeah. But her youngest one, 18 months old, he was number two or three in line to get mm. that shot today. Oh, my goodness. We are thrilled to have the opportunity. We've been waiting. And so we're really excited to have the opportunity to protect them. So on the one hand, you know, I'm doing this interview with her about being a mom, getting getting your child the shot while he's, you know, bouncing on her knee and kind of, you know, sobbing and trying to soothe and recover and stuff. But on the other hand, she's also talking to me from the uh, perspective of being a doctor who right. has seen lots of kids who have mm. been very, very sick with COVID over time. And if we have something that can protect a child from having to land in a hospital, where there are loads more needles, where there are so many tests and probes and it's not a natural environment, then why not do it? And then there's just, again, on the mom side of her, relief of having a child that can finally get the protection that we've had for, in a lot of cases, a long time now. Yeah. And so, John, if you're a parent out there in the DMV, you know, how would you find a place to get your little kid vaccinated? So first thing, you know, obviously hit up your pediatrician. But if you can exhaust other options, whether it's from state and county health departments, uh, I'm sure some pharmacies are probably getting this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But your best bet is going to be with your pediatrician at first. And, and hopefully you have heard from your pediatrician's office already about how they're handling it. If not, you can reach out to them. WTOP's John Doman telling us how people receive this vaccination today. Thank you. And of course, having a vaccine for little kids is a big deal, but understandably, there's a lot of questions that parents have. For answers, we turn to Dr. Monica Gandhi. She's a professor of medicine at University of California, San Francisco, and she leads a department on infectious diseases and global medicine. Dr. Gandhi, thank you for being here. Thank you. So while some parents took a major sigh of relief during this rollout of vaccines (laughs) for their little ones, they are in the minority. A recent Kaiser Health poll found that only one in five parents will get their young children vaccinated immediately. Understandably, parents have a lot of questions. So let's start at the top of the list. Why bother getting your young kid vaccinated if the majority of them have already been exposed to the virus? What are the real benefits here? So you're right that 75% of children zero to 18 have been exposed to the virus by a seroprevalence study that the CDC released on April 26th. And so natural infection definitely protects you from COVID-19, but there's been a lot of studies that what's called hybrid immunity, getting at least one vaccine after natural infection increases your protection from symptomatic COVID. So just giving one dose after there's been natural infection really strengthens our immunity. And there's been study after study, we call it hybrid immunity, super immunity, but there's a strengthening of the combination of infection plus vaccination. Some people might want to wait a beat, right? Like see how it goes and maybe wait a few months, get through the summer as we're all outside. Um, Is this something that you expect to kind of ramp up over the summer? Or do you think it's the people who are going to do it are going to do it right away? And then and then we might see a drop off. No, that's a really fair question. In that same Kaiser poll, um, 37% of parents said that they want to wait and see. Mm -hmm. And then about a third said, okay, I'm not going to do it. But it was fair for parents to say, hey, I want a little more time. I want to see how it goes. There are 17 million children in this country who are less than five. And we're going to at least get 18% of those um, by the Kaiser Foundation survey. And then they'll have a lot of safety data, the other parents to look at and say, okay, I feel more comfortable now vaccinating my child. I do not think that there should be any mandates for the fall. Um, I think that it'd be great to get vaccinated before the fall, but no mandates for school because we really, parents are not ready. Many parents are not ready and we don't want to disrupt learning. Mm. And so let's get into the details here. You know, there are two vaccines available for young kids, Moderna and Pfizer. So what are the key differences here and what should parents know? So the Moderna vaccine is 25 micrograms and it's two doses supposedly given four weeks apart in the trials. And the Pfizer is three micrograms and those doses are given, the first two doses are given three weeks apart and then eight weeks later you get the third dose. So 
two doses versus three and a higher dose with Moderna. The differences between the trials were these mainly. Um, they both increased antibodies really nicely. Um, in fact, the antibody levels were higher than in adults, which is really your marker that you're producing an adequate immune response to protect the child. And probably what are called cells, um, B cells and T cells that produce those antibodies. So both did really well there. There was actually more protection from symptomatic COVID, even mild infection with the third dose of Pfizer. Hmm. And it could be that you just need a longer spacing between doses. That's one theory that's come out. And then third is there were more side effects with the Moderna dose, 25 micrograms, nothing dangerous, but more fevers um, with the Moderna dose than with the smaller dose of Pfizer. So I think parents could choose either way. It's convenient to do the two. The three may seem like it takes too long. But on the other hand, there were no fevers in the Pfizer dose. Would you suggest for a younger child, like say you have a six month old, maybe edge towards Pfizer because it's a lighter dose? I mean, that yes. would seem OK. Yeah, because you're absolutely right. Like if there's this strange thing where like 25 micrograms across a whole age range for Moderna, the three microgram was chosen because it's kind of a balance of safety, but it wasn't enough. We needed another dose, um, that third dose, but the safety was maintained. So I like the littler ones getting the three microgram mm -hmm. times three. Mm. And it's been a long while for us waiting, you know, for this vaccine for our youngest kids. Does it still protect against the variants that are circulating now? I mean, Omicron's just pumping out, you know, new variants. Should parents have assurance that they'll be protected from those? You know, basically children are protected as well as adults are protected with their vaccine doses with Omicron. And you're right that in general with Omicron, there's more mild breakthrough infections than there were prior to Omicron. It's just that the protection against severe disease is maintained. Now, little children are not really at risk for severe disease, at least in the trials. There was no severe disease in the placebo arm or the vaccine arm. But the reason to get vaccinated now is they're more at risk for severe disease later. And beyond that, we do a lot of childhood vaccines where the risk may become higher later. Um, and it just gives you the cellular immunity that's the basis for longstanding protection. Hmm. Um, and zooming out a little bit, because I know we are in a different place um, worldwide with COVID than we even were a month ago. Um, we're starting to see sort of a deviation of two metrics that have kind of stayed together for a while, and now they're starting to separate. Can you talk about that and where we are? Yes. So we call this decoupling, um, but it's essentially this incredible decoupling between cases and severe disease. That was already starting to be seen with vaccinated people um, in the Delta era. It was seen with vaccinated people in the Omicron era. But at this point, it's a kind of across the board because we have so much natural immunity. We have so much population immunity across the planet mm -hmm. that cases are surging, but the deaths are staying very low, lower than it, they've been since March of 2020. That's not just across the planet, but in the United States. Um, still, we're not seeing an uptick in deaths. So that's a good thing. That means that we basically have so much more population immunity. It's really a combination of our, at least in the United States, our 83% vaccination rate, at least one dose over five, our high rates of natural immunity, at least 60% in adults, 75% in children. And all that hybrid immunity means we have high levels of population immunity and that is creating a, a situation where cases go up, but our rates of severe disease stay low. Um, and what are, I guess just, just what are your feelings for the summer as we close out? I feel like we've just been all on this roller coaster um, and now we have these vaccines for little kids. It seems like things are going in the right direction again. Um, is that a safe <laughs> a safe yeah. feeling to have? Or? It's been exhausting to have this pandemic, for sure. I think the two things that give, should give people security about the summer is we now have vaccines available for the entire swath of the population. That is pretty profound. Second is that we have treatments. And that's really important when you think about older people who are more at risk for severe breakthroughs mm -hmm. to have Paxlovid, to have Molnupiravir and to have the monoclonal antibodies. I think the combination of treatment and vaccines for the whole population should give us hope that we can have an okay summer. Dr. Gandhi, thank you so much for your time and shedding some light on our state in this pandemic and what parents should be thinking about when thinking of vaccines for young kids. Thank you. 
Have you been lacing up your sneakers a bit more lately? Next, we'll tell you about a new center that's helping all runners improve and prevent injury. Backed by the experience of its hardworking members, Steamfitters Local 602 is ready to take on your next commercial heating, cooling, HVAC, or refrigeration project. Steamfitters Local 602 adds value to our community through its partnerships with local contractors and building owners, all while keeping the focus on improving the lives of its members and their families throughout the DMV. For work that's on time and on budget, go to steamfitters-602.org to schedule your next project. That's steamfitters-602.org. Steamfitters Local 602 changing lives. Gas prices have been going crazy lately, but here at WTOP, we have something that might help. It's called Fuel Your Summer, and it's WTOP's free gas giveaway presented by Astound Broadband. All you have to do is go download the WTOP app, register on the My WTOP page, and enter for your chance to win $100 in gas gift cards per day and the grand prize of free gas for a year up to six grand. During the month of June, fuel up on us. Just download the WTOP app, register, and enter for your chance to win today. Fuel Your Summer is brought to you by Astound Broadband, powered by RCN. Boost your internet with a gig and experience better. Visit astound.com. So check it out as soon as you can. On this first day of summer with warm weather days ahead, many of us are taking our exercise routines outside. But for runners who are getting back into the sport or adjusting their outdoor running routine, a new resource in our community could offer a healthy reset. The new University of Maryland Charles Regional Rehabilitation Running Center, say that three times fast, is located in Southern Maryland, and it lets anyone visit for a full assessment and running plan. And here to tell us more about it is WTOP's Christy King. And hello. tell us, hello, and tell <laughs> us, um, give us the gist here. Why is this center so novel and how much does it cost if we want to go there? Well, it's not just for, for people who are getting back into it. It's from... The very you've never thought about it before. You've never considered it before. Yeah. Um, or people who are trying to improve personal best times for mm. a marathon or a 5K. And and what's new about it is that it kind of came about of the, the physical therapist at the rehab center saying, wow, you know, we have this gap. We people, quote, graduate from physical therapy. They've had an injury. They've had surgery. They need recovery. So they graduate, but they still want to be active. Mm -hmm. We still need to help them, right? Mm. And they may still want to continue. And so they thought, wow, we've got this great rehab program. Let's build on that for our running program and the center, the running center. And they take a medical approach to everything you need to know, whether you're starting from zero and you don't even walk across the living room. (laughs) It's like you walk to the refrigerator. Right, right, right. or, or, Or whether, right. And um, because it's so tailored specifically to the participant, um, the prices would range. They they did market studies and and um, it's basically between 100 and 200 bucks. But you come in for an initial evaluation mm. that's very extensive and they come up with a program for you tailored to you that might be six weeks. It might be three months. It might be six months. And you um, do your evaluation which even involves like a machine that measures your oxygen consumption as you exercise. You get on the treadmill and you've got this Darth Vader thing on your (laughs) face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they know exactly where you're starting to give you the customized program. Yeah, So and it's brand new. And Christy, you actually spoke with a physical therapist there, Amol Bakare. Did he have any tips for people who might be considering this program or just considering running in general? What does he suggest? Well, I was asking him specifically about they customize your footwear. They make sure you have the right shoes to do what you want to do. Yeah. But in regards to very beginning people, he says, don't overthink it. You're, you know, it's people, it's very competitive out there. Everybody wants to sell you the perfect shoe right. that's going to maximize your performance. But he's like, just to start with uh, athletic footwear that you're comfortable with. Every runner is different. So there is no there is no judgment. There is no competition. There is no um, hard and fast rule whether or not you can finish your program or not. We just want to make sure that we give you a structure to work with so that you won't feel you are completely unaware of how to go run. And then once you kind of get into a, a little bit, then you can adjust as needed and your coach can help you with that. Mm. And people, as you just mentioned, who live in this area tend to be the type A kind of competitive types. Is there any reason to think you shouldn't go to the center maybe because, you know, you're not the best runner or you're not an amazing athlete? Well, he says um, 
we want you to feel welcome. We want you to come and, and know that we're here to guide you and you are the competition. Whatever goals you set for yourself, we want to help you get to your goal mm. and accomplish your goal and make sure you do it in a way that's therapeutic and not going to injure you. Yeah. And he is inspired by what running does for him. He was um, he played basketball as a kid and then uh, he wanted to run because he was a basketball player. But then in medical school, he said it was a way to get outside, get active, get blood flowing through your brain. Right. Stress and, relief, and, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. So running has a scientific basis of reducing the risk of heart diseases. It also helps you reduce the risk of developing arthritis in your knees and your hips. If you don't have it right now, if you start running, you will be less likely to develop one in the future. Um, so considering these positive factors, I think uh, one must try running at least, you know, in their in their life. Very cool. Christy King breaking us down this new running center in La Plata, Maryland. Hopefully you guys can go check it out and let us know how it is. My pleasure. And it's a good day to walk or run because before we go, we have to remind you, it is the summer solstice. Yeah, you'll have plenty of time or plenty of sunlight to do that, rather. The sun is going to set at 8.37 p.m. today. That's the latest of the year. Oh, that's so funny. I wrote down 8.39. Oh, really? Yeah, we have differing mm, sources. Well, but around the same time, Regardless, I guess. it's going to be up for 15 hours, so we have plenty of time to do everything you want to do <laughs> this, this evening. Yeah. Well, you also have some locations that you like to watch. Oh, the yeah. The sunrise and sunset, you I were saying. I love the sunset. Yeah, yeah. So sun sets the best locations, or there are a few I really like. One is the balcony of the Kennedy Center. You know, it's pretty much open. Aww, There's yeah. that new like reach area yeah. where there are cool sculptures. That's fantastic. You get to look over the Potomac and you kind of are high up so you can see the sun. On the hill, right. Sun. Yeah. Um, the Georgetown waterfront is also pretty sick. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard of these places. Yeah. I mean, obviously they're great. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to give us some like some like super secret, like, you know, you go up here and you turn left and then at the rock. You turn right, and you have the perfect view. Well, I gotta keep those close. You know, I can't. I can't just give those out. No, I'm kidding. Um, but the third one is the Yards Park and Navy Yard. That's also supposed to be really cool. All of them pretty much include water, sun plus water. It's a good view. Mm-hmm. Add a little frosé in there. Boom. Nice iced tea. You got yourself an evening. Just you and the sun. I Not love bad. it. Well, enjoy your long, long day today, and thank you for being here for the DMV Download. We're sponsored by Steamfitters Local 602. Our managing editor is Craig Schwab, and our music is by Real World. Be sure to give us a review and rate our show if you get the chance. You can also follow us on social media where we post content every day from behind the scenes. You can find out more about this podcast and become one of our VIP listeners at dmvdownload.com. The DMV Download is a product of WTOP News. Listen on 103.5 FM in D.C., 107.7 FM in Virginia, 103.9 FM in Frederick, online at wtop.com and on the WTOP News app. Have a great night, guys.